Hey guys, it's Eric here at Farpoint Farms. I got a problem, and this is the solution. If you've been following my channel for any length of time, you know that I'm big into solar, and I have a 1200 watt array that we set up back in 2020, as well as another 2000 watts of solar that I set up, or am currently setting up as we speak here in late 24. But something really weird happened, right? The system has been working beautifully for months and months and months, years and years and years. Suddenly, I was working on editing a video and the power went out. And I was like, well, that is odd because the power is solar and it's been a beautiful week. So I went into the Bluetooth app that I have for my charger here and I checked it out and it was putting out zero watts. And I was like, well, that is definitely not good. I figured maybe a trip fuse. I don't know. We're going to find out. I go outside, look at all the usual suspects because occasionally the inverter will, will pop. Uh, you know, it's got a... Um, what do you call that? You know, a trippable, resettable fuse on it. And it just, it was fine. And the 50 amp fuse that powers the system was fine. And the box was lit up. It was getting voltage from the batteries. And I have a huge bank of batteries. Well, I looked at the system and I guess corrosion or looseness in the main connector coming from the array into the inverter had failed. And, and the entire thing had melted and had dripped off, and so I had no connection there. I was able to make a temporary patch, basically splice the two wires hardwired together, which is not something I wanted to do, but I needed to get something that I could fix it permanently with, and these uh, little connections for solar, they're different. It's, a, it's their own unique animal. So I got this kit here, and I should have got it when I set it up, but it, I am poor, so I didn't. So I, I made it using automotive tools, I did have one of these plastic things to, to tighten it down with. It came with the kit that I bought, like the, the end kit. But I did not have this tool right here. Let me go ahead and see if I can get it out of here. I'll take the Velcro off. The, it is important, and this is Bouge RV, uh, Boge RV. I don't know how you pronounce that. B-O-U-G-E slash RV or RV. And this is important stuff here. You've got to have the right crimp. And I had something that was so close that it worked for that many years, but it wasn't so close that it worked forever. And you know, you don't want to be mucking around with the possibility uh, where something could light on fire and take out the whole thing. What if it had taken out the whole box with batteries and everything in it? What if that had gotten hot enough to uh, ignite an ember? And so that was my stupidity, but that is something that is solved with this. It also comes with the uh, connector and disconnectors to tighten these things down. And these little pouches here have all the different fittings that you're going to need. So for various sizes and gauges of wires, I'll go ahead and take one out of the package here just so you see what I'm talking about. We have male and female, and they are different. So it has the tool to, to crimp these down or squeeze these down with the gaskets. And you can see male and female. And the connectors for those are different. So we have our, fem our male here and our female here. They're going to go together. But you can see the crimp there. It was very similar to an automotive tool that I have, but not close enough. And so the kit comes with a variety of that stuff. It wasn't all that expensive, and I, was, I, I need it. So I bought it. What we're going to do today here is uh, take it outside. I will show you how to fix your wiring the proper way. And uh, hopefully this never happens again. And, of course, I'll use this kit. Another deciding factor was since I am now adding you know, a lot more solar panels to the solar system... I want to make sure that, uh, that I don't run into an issue like this again. So it's time to, to buy this stuff and do it the right way. So I've got that. Anyway, let us uh, let me put all this back in here so we can walk down. Let's pause the camera here in a second, and uh, we'll walk down there. I will hook, uh, hopefully I'll get it on a tripod and get a good enough angle so you can see. Hopefully all can see that. Holy cow, is that not good? Right, we got big problems here. It's just literally melted this off. So what I'm going to do is cut this. And we're going to splice in new connectors here. And up close here, hopefully you can see this. Burned. Melted off. Burned it. And um, that's usually caused by high resistance. Resistance equals heat. And heat melted this thing down. So the next step <clears throat> is to take this wire right here. And we're going to cut back about a half inch of the insulation. So about right like that. See about there. Okay, hopefully you can see that pretty good there. It's hard to gauge how close to have this thing to the camera before it gets blurry, but 
There we go. Right, that's a little too long, but I can always trim the tip off if I need to, but that's about what you're looking for. Same process, you can see the little butterfly here, the wings. I'm gonna slide that down until it's on it. And once it's sitting there, we take our tool and we line it up so that we have it just right. There it is. A little harder to see probably from the distance, but I can zoom the camera in. Nice good fit. And I have my piece here. I'm going to slide that in. Got a good crimp. Look at that crimp, right? So that's perfect. That's just what we're looking for. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get our end. And that would be this piece here. All right, so once we have that part on there, we're going to disassemble this from this, and you'll have this piece on the inside here. That's our compression fitting with a rubber seal. And the first thing you want to do is push this down onto the wire. And then you want to insert this piece here, which is our rubber seal. We got that upside down. The compression fitting facing down. And we're going to kind of push that into place. Sometimes it's easier if you separate it, but we're going to get that down just a little bit. Right, and that seal there is protecting water from coming up in here. I'll put this piece back on there. And we are ready to insert our top. Now, it may be hard to see, but there's little teeny catches right here and here. You see there's little barbs. There's a one way. So when I stick this on, it locks into place. And you can see right there, the rubber is right around that seal. Now when we thread this on, it squeezes that rubber fitting and squishes it forward to waterproof it. And then if you can't do this by hand, this kit also seems to come with this tool, which is literally a wrench for that. I slide that up on there. If I can get it on there, there we go. And I can use that as extra leverage to make sure that that's tight. A little more. There we go. Okay, so that connection is pretty well done. And that, my friends, is that. It's time to reattach. And we'll take a look at the solar and see if it starts producing again. So, got both halves here. We put those together and we're done. Good little tool. Certainly makes it easier, Bose RV. And the fact that it came with, you know, some fittings, some ends for me and, uh, and the tool to actually tighten it down because that other one was really snug so it didn't want to tighten very easily. I like that. Let me get this put away. And we've lost the sun a little bit here, but I'll bet you even in the afternoon, this panel array still produces pretty well. So let's take a look. Okay, so even though there's no sunlight currently on the panels, still getting a bit of residual and we're getting out at what, 30 watts or uh, 30 volts at 51, 52 watts, something like that. Batteries are 100% charged, so that helps. And it's a 24 volt system and it's currently putting out it's 28.4 so it is maxed out and you can see i got 800 amp hours of uh, of battery power and it is 100 percent charged with zero amps coming in or coming out right now because we're outside everything's turned off but that's it my friends i have fixed my solar array tomorrow when she's fully operational we can go back to using all the stuff so about Three quarters of our house is eventually going to be run off solar. Right now, about oh, about a third is currently run off of solar. And this setup does really well. Uh, variety, let me zoom out here. A variety of lithium batteries, big and small. The system started out with that, which was a uh, 240 amp hour, 24 volt battery. One of those old cell tower batteries put in a nice case. Then we got another uh, 24 volt, 200 amp above it. And you can't see it really well there, but we have two stacked 24 volt, 100 amp hour batteries. And then over here, we have one, two, three, four, 12 volt, 100 amp hour batteries. So a lot of, a lot of storage capacity for cloudy days and, and things like this. In fact, it took several days for us to realize that the solar panel had suffered a failure because, well, it was just running off of this stuff. I wasn't really checking it. As long as the lights come on, we don't really check. That's a pretty cool setup here. And uh, I've made some videos on this. I've made a whole series on solar. So hope you'll check it out. And of course, I'll leave a link to where you can get the uh, 
little kit that I bought. That's just something I picked up, but it's, it's pretty useful and probably necessary if you're going to have something like this. Till next time, my friends, take care.